Right, hello everyone. Um, thank you very much for coming along this lunchtime uh, for our our updates, not about testing after all, but instead about uh, the plans that we've put in place in terms of responding to lockdown 3.0. Um, we will just give people a couple of minutes before we get stuck into the main presentation. I can see we've got what, 87 attendees already, um, so that's nice uh, and they're coming in. Um, I think I've I've properly switched on the question and answer panel this time. Uh, apologies for not doing it correctly last time, but I think I've got it this time. So if you click the, uh, there's like a kind of speech bubble with a question mark in it, uh, or it might be slightly different depending on which device you're you're, you're on. Um, there's a, a place there you can put questions in. So feel free to stick in questions in there uh, at any point during the presentation. Um, and there's some time at the end where I'll try and answer as many of those as possible. Uh, thank you also to those of you who have submitted questions in advance. Uh, there's some questions in there I can answer. There's some questions in there I can't answer, I'm afraid. So um, we'll just we'll just do as much as we possibly can uh, at that stage. OK. So I do make it one o'clock, so I'll get started. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Paul. I'm the principal at Wyke. A uh, single item for us to talk about today, which is just to take you through the plans that we've put in place for the next six weeks, possibly longer, though, um, where we're going to be in this national lockdown uh, position. Um, I guess, look, before we get started, I did want to reassure you all we have been planning for this uh, in the briefings I did way back in the summer, way back in August. Uh, I explained the planning we'd made around three scenarios, uh, one where we had students on site, all students on site, Number two, where uh, scenario B, where we had the students on a 50-50 model, and then scenario C, where we had the students working entirely remotely. Uh, and, and the purpose behind all that planning was always to be in a position whereby if we had to overnight, we could switch the college from one of those scenarios to the other scenario. Um, and I think that's exactly where we're at the moment. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to actually be overnight. Um, uh, obviously, Monday, Monday 8 p.m. was not amazing timing in terms of the whole education community getting things prepared, um, but I was very pleased with the college on Tuesday and how quickly we were able to turn things around and, and put in place the plans that I've got to share with you. So I will get into it. First of all, what is the plan? Um, so the plan is fundamentally very simple. Um, we are going to deliver uh, pretty much the full study program for students but we're just going to do it remotely. We're going to do it from home. Um, we've got everything in place. We're going to deliver the full lessons, every lesson as per the timetable. Um, we're going to have registers. Uh, we're going to make sure there's live content for all of those lessons. And basically, we're going to teach everybody as if we weren't in the middle of a, a global pandemic uh, and as if the examinations were still going to take place uh, and you'll get everything that you need. Because those are the skills that you're going to need and the knowledge that you're going to need uh, to go forwards in life. And also, we don't want to take away the big thing that, that, that you've all been working on uh, and been working towards, you know, um, that that's possibly the biggest problem about this is like, well, what's the point? Where are we headed to? Well, look, we're headed towards achieving some A-levels, right? Or some B-techs or some GCSEs uh, or some C-techs or whichever course you're on. Uh, and we're still going to do that, right? We're going to deliver the full course. Uh, and just for this period, we're going to do it at home. Um, as I put on this slide, part of that uh, kind of just doing things as normal is that we're still going to do examinations. We're still going to do assessments. That's absolutely our plan. Um, we'll be doing the examinations as we'd originally thought we would be both at Easter time for our second year students uh, and in the summer. Um, haven't quite got full plans about how it'll work in the summer, but fundamentally we'll do summer examinations for all students. And then that combination of evidence will be the thing that goes towards uh, giving you the final grade for the qualification that you're on. So that's that's the plan in a nutshell, and that actually makes the rest of the slides very straightforward in that basically whatever you were doing before, we're going to try and do the same. Um, now we're just going to try and do it remotely. OK, so in terms of the college opening, look, obviously this this new strain of the virus is concerning, um, highly infectious. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's got to our region uh, substantially yet, but that's that's almost certainly just a matter of time. So just right now, the safest place for us all to be is at home. 
we know what we're doing with this, don't we? I mean, we've been through this before. I remember back in March, there was an awful lot of fear. We didn't know what the virus was. How did it work? What was it going to mean for us? Now, I think we do know what it means. You know, yes, it is something to be concerned about because it can be very, very nasty illness, particularly nasty for people uh, who are either older or who've got pre-existing medical conditions. Um, but we know that to control it, we just need to not interact with people. Uh, if we don't interact with people, we can't catch it uh, and we'll be fine. So as long as we stay at home, then we'll all be safe. Uh, so as a consequence to that, the college site is going to be closed uh, and is now closed um, uh, until at least Monday, the 22nd of February. We hope that we'll be able to reopen on Monday, the 22nd of February. But I know there's been a few comments already about saying, well, we don't know when this lockdown will end and what the actual time span will be. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Uh, as I put in my my uh, messages, we will have a very limited opening for those students for whom there is no other option uh, uh, than, than coming onto sites because they just can't access the work any other way, um, either because um, uh, they, they've got significant uh, personal issues that need to be resolved or, or there's completely insurmountable connectivity issues or, or whatever. At the moment, we're thinking that's going to be literally a handful of people. Um, this isn't about a social event. We're not going to be putting on lessons um, on the college sites. It's entirely going to be students coming in, getting access to the remote teaching that's taking place, uh, uh, you know, getting little bits of, of support in any break time. Um, but fundamentally, it, it's, it's not going to be a lot of fun to come onto site. Uh, and I very strongly recommend to everybody that you that you access from home, save the travel, keep you safe, safe. Um, and that's the best way. Uh, as I say, we have been talking to students about the best way to support them. If you still feel strongly that some access to site is going to be the best thing for you, well, then please do get in touch with the tutor team, um, the, the WFH at white.ac email address you could use. As I say, we have been chatting to people over the last kind of 48 hours and the vast majority of people after those conversations have agreed that the best place to be is, is to stay at home. Delivery of the curriculum, I kind of already mentioned this, we're going to deliver it all, right? The full timetable, I'm incredibly proud of the, the teaching uh, and uh, pastoral teams at the college who just said on Tuesday when we said, look, is this feasible? Can you do it? Can you just do the whole thing from home? And they went, yeah, we're going to do it. Uh, amazing, fantastic response from the team. Um, just to remind you about what the expectations are, so it will be via Teams. Every session that you have on your timetable will have uh, a, a, re a register, um, so that way we can track where the students are, are, are coming along and engaging. Uh, and um, also every session will have some live element and that live element will review prior learning. It will check understanding of the current task and crucially is going to be an opportunity for teachers, tutors, other pastoral staff to to have conversations with students and to find out how you're doing, check everything is OK, see if there's anything else we need to be doing to, to, to look after you through this period. Um, so that's the minimum expectation. Uh, I, I'm not frankly expecting that the lessons are going to be a full hour and 10 on live on Teams. I'm not sure that's actually a great plan, frankly. Um, if you've got kind of back to back lessons, that's a lot of time sat staring at a screen. I hope there'll be opportunities to get up and move around, do do five star jumps or run around the house three times or something. Um, I think, you know, we, we need to be making sure that we're moving and we're active. But what you will get is you get some live content to every single lesson and you will be getting the full curriculum through the, the tasks and activities that you're going to be set over this period. Uh, as I put at the bottom, you're all still enrolled to the courses. You need to do the work uh, and it's the work that's going to get you the grade at the end of the day. Uh, in many respects, right, getting rid of these examinations and these final assessments uh, is great, right? We can teach you without some of the nonsense that goes on in terms of preparation for examinations. And we can we can really teach you the real stuff and we can really give you the fair grade based on your efforts over the whole whole year. So I actually think it's quite challenging, right? You know, there is no, this is, this is even more effort, I think, from you. There's no leaving it to the last minute and then blagging it and cramming it. That isn't going to cut it this year. Uh, you've got to prove to us that you deserve the grade that we're going to allocate to you come the end of the year. OK, so an update from my uh, uh, original update, which I did send around this morning. Um, we, we, of course, have taken the decision to cancel the uh, planned vocational exams next week. Um, I'm not entirely sure why the government didn't feel that that was an obvious decision to take. Um, you know, if it's not safe for everybody to leave their homes, then I don't see why it's safe to get people into an exam room and sit examinations. Um, 
so look so we've, we've taken that decision we also think that actually uh, in the round that's likely to be better for those students um, because just right now is not a time to be doing exams we've all got plenty of other things on our mind uh, and uh, we should be able to give you a, a fair grade through whatever the centre assessed grade process is rather than potentially you being saddled with a grade that didn't reflect what you're actually capable of because you were put into an impossible situation. So as you can probably tell, I'm a bit peeved that the government didn't make that decision because I feel like that should have been a central decision and it shouldn't have been something that colleges were trying to determine. Um, but I'm, I'm entirely comfortable that this is the right decision and that, that we definitely should be protecting you at the moment and making sure you, you stay at home and, and keep safe. Um, we are sending out um, uh, by PDF uh, your exam scripts from the winter examinations. We're in a process of scanning and sending those out and some curriculum teams are sending out resources uh, via post as well. GCSE results day will apply to some of you next week. Um, so we will be uh, emailing you the results in the morning. Uh, you'll get a copy posted out to you of the actual, uh, the final uh, slips, the results slips. Um, and then your, the team will be in touch basically to have conversations about what those results mean, whether that means you still need to keep studying and try and sit the exam uh, in the summer or whether um, uh, or whether that means that we change your study programme at this, at this point because you've already got the grades that you need. So all those individual conversations will take place after that. Uh, Easter examinations, as I've already said, still planned for second years. That is a great focus for us at the moment. That is your last kind of mock, as it were, before the final examinations uh, we have yet to be determined how we will run those, but we will have some form of final assessment for all of our students, second years and first years in the summer, um, once we've got a clearer picture of where we're at. Student support. Um, Chris uh, has produced, Chris Herring, our vice principal, has produced the safeguarding addendum and I sent that round with the email on, on Tuesday. I strongly recommend you have a look through that. That gives you all of your key contacts um, in terms of the the, the first first port of call if you've got significant issues around keeping you safe and, and looking after you. Um, as ever, your tutor, your teachers, you know, they are there, they're on teams, send them messages. Um, if you're struggling with something, get in touch. You know, that was one of my key things, you know, keep in touch. Um, that's that's just, just let us know and we'll try and sort something out for you. Uh, we have got the absence texts working again. So if you miss your remote lessons, I mean, Actually, attendance of remote lessons is fantastic. Brilliant work by everybody since the beginning of the year. It's it's been very interesting kind of case study. But but actually, remote lessons get higher attendance than face to face lessons. But still, absence text text for any students who do miss those, um, so that that you're aware uh, and so that parents are aware too, in case anything isn't going quite as it should be at home. Uh, and then we're still going to run our behaviour management uh, system. Um, you know that is all about supporting you to achieve your very best. Um, we will still intervene if we feel that students are falling behind. Uh, we've got our, our kind of level one, level two warnings that teams can issue. And then if students aren't responding to those, we will still hold case conferences uh, over the Teams platform. Uh, as I put there, though, we, we won't be holding any of the higher disciplinary meetings because we're definitely not going to ask students to leave college uh, in the middle of a national lockdown. But I have said to to teams that if students continuing to underperform and they were due to have a hearing, then we should still be collecting that evidence so that when we come back after the break, we can then have those meetings and we can decide what's best and most appropriate for, for the student in that circumstance. Um, so yeah, so look, basically, as I said at the top, everything's continuing as normal. Um, Student access to learning, connectivity, we spent an awful lot of money on this. We're still spending more money on this. Thank you to those of you who got in contact since my original messages to say that you had issues around getting uh, uh, connected at home. Um, please do send a message to financial support at white.ac.uk if that's still something that's a challenge for you and we'll see what we can do. A recent announcement, um, so we'll send out details soon, about potential increase to data allowances um, for, for, for people on low incomes who are relying on kind of mobile uh, hotspot to use for their Wi-Fi. So there'll be some stuff coming out on that shortly. Uh, so, and, and to be fair, actually, to the government, there, there is a significant central um, attempt to make sure that everybody can engage in remote learning through this period. So um, please do say if you need any help and we'll try to, to get support to you. Uh, same for our bursaries we've been doing since the beginning of the year, we'll pay those via our backs. And transport, uh, it already was a relatively low fee for this 
by the to be refunded from the previous lockdown to fund the unused transport fees um, uh, in the ticket, whenever that may be. Uh, well-being, right? The biggest thing that I think we need at the moment is um, is is to look after each other, right? And I think some sort of activities, whole college activities that we can get involved in. Um, somebody was talking about walking to the moon or something um, and about how we could collectively walk to the moon or climb Kilimanjaro or, or some other uh, kind of challenging task that we could do collectively, um, obviously in our own homes. Uh, there's got to be some great stuff out there and you all must have some brilliant kind of pursuits, interests, contacts uh, who want to get involved in this. So please, please, do uh, send any ideas to student underscore executive at white.ac.uk or contact them on Teams. If you've got some brilliant ideas about wellbeing activity that we could do collectively as a college, people can engage in. Last time we had the white workouts, we also had the, um, oh, I've forgotten what it was, we were the second uh, sort of top country in the uh, coll top college in the country uh, for engagement in, a, 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 in another um, activity, of getting people up and active. Uh, and it was great. So look, we want loads of that, send your ideas through to student executive um, and, and get let's get some stuff going over the next six weeks. It is going to be dark. It is beautiful sunny day, but freezing. Um, so we need to do some we need to do some stuff to keep ourselves happy and jolly through this through this winter. Um, as I say, uh, all all student facing staff, teachers, tutors, pastoral staff um, are going to take some of the time of their sessions with you just to check in, just to see that you're all right. The fundamental way that we can make sure that you've got well-being is by challenging, stretching you, uh, you know, teaching you stuff, learning new things, um, feeling like you're making progress. That's the biggest thing you can do to feel like uh, you're you, to feel well. Um, uh, but we can also just sort of check in and make sure there's nothing that's getting in the way. So that's that's the plan on that. But please do send any ideas through to student executive. In terms of communication, uh, we don't have the staff on site to run the college phone line in the normal way. Um, so, so we will be uh, kind of stopping that uh, or have stopped that. And then we want people to contact directly. Uh, there's email contacts on the website for any of the specific kind of areas you need to go to. And also if you go to student portal, you can get hold of your teacher and tutor um, contacts as well. Uh, look, I mean, Teams has revolutionized this basically you know and have kind of direct contact to the staff that you need across the college in the vast majority of cases so please do you know keep using teams as it's a great platform the instant messaging works very very well so that's it very quick rundown of the plans that we've got at the moment um uh, under the examinations i sent around an update this morning uh, that kind of gave uh, the text of the secretary's speech yesterday and the reply from Ofqual. We're obviously right in the midst of lots of discussions and uh, kind of uh, consultations about what the replacement system should be. Uh, as you know, from pretty early on this year, uh, I felt that we should have not been working towards examinations. The government uh, were adamant that we would have examinations. Um, sadly, they've turned out to be wrong. Uh, and it's a shame that we haven't got a clear plan in place instead. Um, but now we need to do some work to pull that all together. And I hope that uh, that will involve some good consultation with education providers to make sure that we get a good a good plan in place. Um, but just at this moment, we, we don't know what that's going to be, which makes things very simple for us, really, at college, and that we will just continue to teach you as if it is the real qualification. We're going to teach you the whole thing. We're going to test you the whole thing. And then your grade will be based on that. So it doesn't really matter what system they come up with. Um, you can determine what grade you're going to get come the end of this year, because it's going to be all about what you put in over the next two terms through this term and through the term and through the summer term. That's what's going to determine the, 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 the final examinations. Don't worry too much about the systems and all the debates that's going to go on about that. Um, we'll worry about that and we'll make sure that you get the grade that you deserve. OK. So those were all of the messages I had to share. I'm very, very happy to take um, some questions now. I'm just going to go to the questions that were posted um, before uh, before the meeting. Um, so uh, there was a question about EPQ students, which is a really good question. What is what is the situation for EPQ? I'm in year one. Thank you. Um, and uh, so last time, uh, EPQs were included in the centre assessed grades process because students kind of 
finished before they could finish their EPQs. Be interesting to see what happens this year because clearly they'll have a, an opportunity for EPQ students to keep working and to complete their EPQs and submit. So at the moment, I haven't got any details about that. Um, and I've got a similar question around core maths. Uh, again, last year, core maths was bundled in with A levels uh, and and the same out, you know, the same process was used. I would strongly suspect that that will be the case again this year. That core maths will also go into the teacher assessed grades process. I think that's probably true for EPQ too, um, but but I'm, we haven't got any clarity about that yet. And that will be part of the thing uh, that the consultation will will be about. Uh, I've got another question here um, from Angela, uh, which is kind of quite a detailed question around how will these grades be determined and what's the benchmarking going to be against previous years um, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, the one thing we do know about benchmarking is that um, it's, it's already been agreed that they would retain the kind of generous approach that happened last year. So because of the very late move to teacher centre assess grades rather than the, the algorithm back in the summer, um, the actual final outcomes uh, both GCSE and A-level were kind of up by about 10% fundamentally. Uh, and those new, that new sort of benchmark had already been agreed that that would be applied to students this year. Um, so I think you can all be confident that the final grades will be on the basis of a pretty sort of generous um, compared to pre-2020 uh, levels um, position. The final details about how that's all going to work, though, I don't think anyone in the country has decided yet. I assume some people have been thinking about it, um, but certainly no one's asked us about it because up till this point, up until Tuesday, uh, everything said that we're definitely doing exams uh, come what may. So unfortunately, that isn't true. Just going over to the chat. Um, so thank you for questions. So I've got one here. Does holding internal examinations not defeat the point in cancelling end of year examinations? Um, so I think the point here is that we've always used our own internal assessments to inform the grades that we would give, the predicted grades we've given to UCAS and so forth. When I say we're going to be holding internal examinations, I'm not saying that the internal examination will be the grade that you get given. Uh, I'm saying it will be a crucial piece of information that supports the final grade that will be given um, uh, and I think that's I think that's right and proper um, so yes don't know what the details on that are going to be yet um, we've got to work through the plans but it's absolutely our plan at the moment to include some form of uh, kind of formal assessment um, as part of that broad suite of evidence to explain what grade students should get so I hope that's that's somewhat uh, reassuring now, have I got any other questions? Uh, since we're going to do the Easter exams, oh, I think that was a follow up from that one before. Uh, just to be clear, grades will be assessed on future performance and not take into account any previous results, i.e. the recent winter exams. Uh, no, I don't think that is the right way of thinking about it. Um, the grades will be a holistic judgment about the performance of students over the whole uh, of their time studying the qualifications, so over the whole kind of two year period. Um, we'll have to see back in March, we were talking about the trajectory, we were talking about Mar after March 20th, what could we reasonably have expected students to have gone on to do if the teaching had continued? Clearly this year that's going to be different. This year there's going to have to be some sort of weighing up of what would the performance have been if it hadn't have been so disrupted um, over the over the year. So lots more details come out about that and I will share it all with you as soon as as soon as I get it um, but but I do think the examination will be an important piece of evidence as they were last year when we did our centre assess grades. Um, will the art department get to mark work in person rather than digital versions? Um, well we're going to have to see where we get to with how much work can be produced but yes I'm sure there will be some review of physical work created hopefully if we can all get back into the building um, you know in the spring um, we'll still be able to produce some great artwork um, but it, I would imagine there'll be more digital work than there's ever been before as part of the portfolios um, good question how do we access additional help on subjects we are struggling with uh, as Jamie says um, please do discuss this with your individual uh, subjects and with your tutor 
Um, look, if you're struggling, just get in touch. Get in touch with the teaching team in the first place and they will try and help you out. If you feel like you're struggling across your whole study programme, um, then definitely get in touch with your tutor uh, and they will they will do all they can to try and help you out. OK. When will we get to find out what results we got in the winter exams? Uh, you'll get to find them out uh, as soon as all the grades have been submitted. So the, the deadline for submission for grades uh, is next Friday for the teaching teams. I know that several areas have already marked their work and, and they may well be feeding back to you in advance of that time. Um, scripts are getting scanned and emailed out uh, as we speak. Um, uh, they're going to be done in kind of subject batches. Uh, so it may be again that you were getting um, uh, PDFs of your scripts coming back to you uh, pretty soon. There we go. So I think that is all of your questions that I've received. I'm very sorry if I, there's any other questions that you haven't been able to ask or I haven't answered. Uh, if that is the case, please just send me an email. I'm very, very happy uh, to, to respond to, to your, your messages. Thank you for all of the, the, the contact that, that you've given me throughout this process. Um, it's been great to get the positive feedback, so thank you for all of that. And it's also very helpful if you don't understand something, just get in touch and we'll try and sort it out. Quite often, if you don't understand something, it's because I don't understand something either, and I can go and ask some other people and they can go and make sure that we do all understand it collectively. OK, so nicely within our half an hour, I hope that was useful. Um, yeah, just want to go back to those those three key points. I said this back in March, um, but yeah, keep in touch. If there's anything that is worrying you, get in touch and we can try and help you out. Work hard. Right. It is still you're still doing the qualifications. You've still got to do all of the work. That is what's going to get you the grade uh, come the end of the day. And then look after yourself and look after each other. Right. Get some exercise, get some fresh air, send somebody a nice message, give an idea to the student exec of something that we could do collectively as a college that will put a smile on all of our faces. All right, everyone, stay safe out there. I'll see you later. Bye bye.